X Men trilogy. That's bad. Bravo for the person that wrote that line. Hope you have diarrhea. Me the whales. Kind of sucks for Scott. He's getting cucked. In the middle of it, you're about to bust, and she turns into something. You're like, hey. No. <laughs> <laughs> I want that. Do we see dick? Probably. I really wanted Marsden to make out with Patrick Stewart. That would have been cool. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Chinga madre. He's like, nah, I'm just going to take the whole ass bridge. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, wait. This is show we're plucking a name out of an all-time movie watch list. Watch it and review it for your review and pleasure. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. We are tackling a whole-ass trilogy. So if you enjoy us doing multiple movies in one big old video, please make sure to let us know down in the comments. Trilogy we're taking on today is the X-Men trilogy. This is where I started to give a shit about X-Men, bro. Okay. I didn't really grow up religiously watching the animated series. So this hit me in the year 2000 when I was like a child. And it was like, it hit me. And I was like, you know what? I'm down. And the, the, I watched this whole series in the theater, opening week, that kind of stuff. Really? Yeah. This is where the, the love and the appreciation for X-Men hit for me. Pretty cool, actually, because from my side, I, when I watched the animated series, I liked it, but it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. I watched the first one in VHS because a cousin of mine... I had to beg him for a week for him to let me watch it. Mm-hmm. Watch the second one in the theaters. And the third one, you told me about it. I was like proud of myself because this was like one of the first DVDs that I bought with my own money. Bullshit, neta? Yeah, I was like also proud I earned my $10 and went to go buy the first X-Men on DVD. In another third of bill. When DVDs were 10 bucks. So before we get right into it make sure you like comment and subscribe let us know your thoughts on the whole x-men trilogy and we're gonna get into it starting with x-men i just love how the first one starts with patrick stewart's voice man mutation it is the key to our evolution it lands so well it's so soothing he out here explaining mutation and then right after that we go into the early 2000 superhero intro that i love <laughs> oh <laughs> that whole cgi close <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> but then we go into Poland in 1944, where Magneto out here stressing as a little child. I, I'm part Polish, so he might be my ancestor, homie. We never know. Yeah, in your dream, bro. For the, the introduction to Magneto was like a sack of potatoes just falling in your face. Because you're not sure who it is until he starts moving the fence. Mm-hmm. We in Mississippi in the not-so-distant future. Rogue out here chilling with a boy. She starts kissing and sucking the life out of him, but no, not in a good way. <laughs> Instead of sucking face. For Rogue. Kristen Dunst, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Alicia Silverstone, Drew Barrymore, Katie Holmes, and Christina Ricci were all considered for the role of Rogue. Je- Jennifer Love Hewitt, I could see her. Jennifer Love Hewitt is too hot way. Sorry. Y- have you seen Rogue in the comics? She's a, she's a dime piece. I know. Natalie Portman did turn the role down, though. Good. Rachel Lee Cook and Catherine Isabel. They were also the chop choices for Rogue and almost won the part until Anna Paquin won the role. I thought she was cute when I watched her. I was like, oh, she's stirring something in my heart. Isn't she supposed to take like the surrogate place of Jubilee for Logan? Yeah, but personality wise, it doesn't she doesn't hit the same as Rogue. Oh, hell no. I don't like disagree with the Anna Paquin choice. It's just like she doesn't have like that Southern charm and she's not like, what's up, baby? That kind of stuff that you would expect from a rogue she's more timid and more shy and more reserved and more in the cor- corner kind of thing animated rogue being really rambunctious with her personality yeah she's so bubbly and she's all like let's go let's go get him and let's kick ass and here she's kind of shy and like reserved if i've ever would have listened uh sugar from her yeah oh it almost doesn't make sense for her to say it in the movie because of her personality doesn't match Then we cut to Miha Jean in Congress trying to school these morons. I crushed on this actress so hard from this movie, man. I didn't. She was like my OG wifey, bruh. 
So we cut to Charles and Eric chatting about the human future because they were at that meeting. Their voices are great. I love Charles and, and Eric. Like the, the the casting was perfect. Properness of their voice, their cadence, How their they speak is perfect. Yeah, and they do convey that they are friends at opposite sides of something. So Terrace Stamp, David Heblin, and Sir Christopher Lee were all considered for Magneto, but Ian McKellen was always the very first choice. Christopher Lee was kind of old by this point mckellen was offered this and gandalf at the same time and director brian singer worked around the lord of the rings schedule for mckellen brilliant choice mckellen also adds some sass to magneto that he doesn't have in the series way yeah. but i loved it it's just like he has this bitchiness to it and it grows as the movies go along the resting bitch face he gives everybody is just mwah, chef's kiss it's not like he has a resting bitch face he's doing that it's everything is purposeful ian mckellen is a goat man and he's acting alongside another goat in patrick stewart who was the fan favorite going into the movie because since the wow. series came out in 92 the fans were casting him as magneto but this could have been a way different movie because the king of pop <laughs> Michael what? Jackson wanted to play Professor X. <laughs> Did you imagine? No, no. X-Men to me, Chimona. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Eric, please, don't do it. Oh, no, Eric. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. Don't be ignorant. <laughs> <Get busy. laughs> so stupid. So we go to the Great White to Canada now where Rogue is hitchhiking. She walks in a bar and there's a cage fight going on. Which are the only rule is don't hit him in the balls. Logan is over here fighting and cheating with tinking around with animantium. <laughs> Wait, those hits sounded oof, like tink, steel tink, pipes. Tink. <laughs> Come on, man, you're cheating. <laughs> it would have just hurt the bones cracking. Yeah, and you can totally see like his physique wise, he's the less the less buff we're ever gonna see him in the st in the series. I, or I think ever. That was because he was casted three weeks before shooting. So he didn't have much time. And he still looked good. And as the movie goes along, if you pay attention, he's getting a little bit buffer because he's working out during production. Damn. Director Brian Singer's first choice for Wolverine was Russell Crowe, who turned it down. Okay. Oh, well, 2000s Russell Crowe was, was okay. Think he, Gladiator. Like, Gladiator. Yeah, Think exactly. Think Gladiator, yes. Other actors considered for the role were Mel Geekson, Aaron Eckhart, John claude Van Damme, Viggo Mortensen, Edward Norton, Bob Hoskins, Keanu Reeves, and Gary Sinise. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Mel Gibson? No way. No. <laughs> None of those. And no. if it was John claude Van Damme, I would probably not become an X-Men fan. So thank God. Wolverine is a short stump. That's like the big problem they had because Wolverine is like 5'2", and Jackman stands at 6'2", six, six I think. Jesus, he's tall. <laughs> they did a good job because he doesn't look that tall to me. Like, no. I, never, I never would have thought he was over six foot. So Doug Ray Scott was actually casted, but he had to drop due to conflicts with the Mission Impossible 2 movie. Oh. Kiefer Sutherland and Jackie Earl Haley were also in the running for the role since 1989 when there was talks of making a movie. Jackie Earl Haley, I would, I could see. I'm not feeling it. And also Nick Offerman auditioned. <laughs> <laughs> the best Wolverine. I could. Wait, imagine if Nick Offerman's Wolverine would have pop up in Deadpool now. Oh, that would be great. So after all this searching, finally Russell Crowe suggested his friend Hugh Jackman to Brian Singer, who auditioned him and cast him as Wolverine, and shortly filming began. Rogue goes after him because he runs away because they threaten him. She tells him what happened to her when she's get touched. And she's like, you should wear a seatbelt. And two seconds later, he's like, nah. And he flies out the window. <laughs> <laughs> so logan out there recovering and he smells saber tooth and her first battle begins rogue sh is stuck in the cabin which, which is now on fire logan out here fighting and then all of a sudden cyclops and storm show up storm blows saber ass away and our people are saved now for storm angela bassett was close to getting it mm -hmm. as well as vivica a fox and Janet jackson were both considered okay and the bald-headed demon known as Jada Pinkett Smith was also considered for the role. <laughs> the bald-headed demon. Oh, my God. Angela Bassett would have been amazing. Yeah, because Angela Bassett would be amazing in anything. Jim Caviezel was casted as Cyclops. Well, oh, she was. he was casted? He was completely casted, but it had to drop out due to 
schedule, which is a reason for a lot of people dropping out is scheduling. I don't know how hard it is to schedule shit, but I don't, I guess it is. And Hollywood is a bitch. So after that, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Ethan Hawke, Johnny Lee Miller, Michael Bean, and Luke Wilson were considered to play Cyclops. They were all considered until James Marsden was eventually casted. No, I mean, Affleck had, no, had to pass this <laughs> so he could do the classic <laughs> Daredevil. <sighs> It would have been the same because Marsden acted the same as Affleck acted in Daredevil. They underused Cyclops terribly in this movie. Uh, well, I would argue that throughout the whole trilogy, they did an okay job in balancing so many characters because there's a lot of people, man. Like, I feel like they underused Storm in the first one. Oh, yeah. Storm. Was, and she had an accent, didn't she? I was trying to figure that out, too, because she barely talks and it kind of sounded like she did have an accent. So I, I was very mm, iffy. I, didn't, I couldn't tell because she doesn't have that many lines. So Sabretooth reports back to Magneto. WWE Hall of Famer Kevin Nash turned down the opportunity to play Sabretooth. Instead, they went with Tyler Maine. I thought it was Triple H my whole childhood. It's just the, just because of the hair. No, it's not Triple H. So we go back to with Mija Jean. She's trying to stick a needle into Logan. He flips out. For Jean, there was Maria Bello, Selma Blair, Renee O'Connor, Julianne Moore, and Lucy Lawless. Mm. They were all considered for the role of Jean. Peta Wilson, she was offered the role. Helen Hunt turned it down as well. And finally, Charlize Theron. Oh, damn. So we got my wifey, Famke Jensen. Shout out to me like. So he Logan flips out, starts running around the mansion. He finds a hoodie because he's cold mm. and starts hearing Charles in his head. He walks in and finds Charles's office. Here we see a few students, including Bobby, a.k.a. Iceman, Jubilee, Pyro, and yep. Kitty Pride. Xavier tells him what the hell is going on, and he freaks out, and he starts to tell him about his past, which he doesn't know because he's got amnesia. He starts to get the gifs of the school, and Charles starts to give some of his backstory between him and Eric. So remember when they're playing, where he's like talking about the school, and they're playing basketball? Mm-hmm. So Remy LeBeau, aka my favorite, Gambito, on my myth, was planned to appear. Oh man! With him being played by Mr. Lord and Savior Keanu Reeves. <gasps> As much as I love Keanu Reeves, he would have messed up that accent. Mm. I don't know. We'll never know. So we cut over to the dick hole senator who is flying somewhere and he's talking shit about mutants. Little did he know he was actually talking to Mystique. Close to be Mystique, but due to scheduling, she wasn't able to do it. Jerry Ryan and also Lucy Liu. Mm. But we get Rebecca Romaine. Fine, Mija, you can't argue that one. No. And for the longest time, I never knew how to pronounce her last name. Rebecca Romaine died. So she whoops the senator's ass with her feet. And then they take him away. <laughs> They're cat scanning Logan and they start to explain the adamantium. They also figure out that he was an experiment. And then Toad is back with the senator. El pinche Darth Maul. Yeah, that's Darth Maul. That's Ray Park. Who This was actually his first speaking role without having anybody to dub him. <laughs> he said one <laughs> line. Yeah. I don't know, but he always has shit on his face when he's acting. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he's a good looking dude, too, man. What are you doing? Oh, he mew. But the senator's reaction was really cartoony. He was like, "Oh yeah, Ugh. Ugh. Magneto hops in a nineteen nineties McDonald's toy. Remember those toys where you used to press the button and things would turn? <laughs> you would well, see the kid. That's what that made me think of. <laughs> he hops in that thing and he starts playing with the toy and he starts to expose some power and he makes the senator into a mutant mm -hmm. we cut to logan raising up gene she reads his mind and starts to see the horrors that he went through but cyclops be cock blocking there's a weird dialogue here where he's like you're gonna tell me to stay away from me girl well, if i had to do that she wouldn't be my girl and then he's like stay away from my girl i didn't understand that that came off really weird i think it was more snarkiness i don't i don't i, I also did not know how to feel about that it was weird it left me going huh anyway Logan goes Mimi, but he starts seeing his nightmares. I guess Gene messed with his brain so much, so it toggled his memory. And he wakes up and accidentally stabs Rogue because she was checking on him. Oh, yeah, that, that really scared me back in the day. I was like, oh, she's going to die. But she recovers by touching Logan and takes away his powers. And then she lets go of Logan, and Logan starts to recover himself, so we're all good in the hood. This captured senator it starts to squeeze through bars. That looked, The CGI looked goofy. Yeah, I think that's the first time I went like, yeah, that looks bad. So he squeezes through the bars and tries to escape. Sabretooth accidentally drops him <laughs> and he falls into the water and Magneto locks his ass in there. Those lineless bad guys are like a constant in these X-Men movies. I like how he sound though, like, rawr, like he was growling. 
Oh, yeah. So the senator washes up naked at a beach. Stanley was the hot dog guy. Then we get Bobby telling Road, people are talking shit, and it's better if she left. But of course, that was Mystique causing drama. Then they used Cerebro to go find her, but Logan took Sightbox's motorcycle to catch up to her. <laughs> During all the distraction, Mystique cracks into Cerebro, and she puts a venom in there. Cyclops and Storm are at the station. Sabretooth and Toad pick a fight Mina! with them. Storm does a Smash Bros. Pikachu on Sabretooth. Meanwhile, Magneto gets to the train and puts Logan in a Jesus pose and takes Rogue, who he wanted all along. Because they, everybody thought he was gonna, he was the one she he that was, was going a to switcheroo, open up. yeah. Because that's like he's playing with us, the audience, because he knows we know that that Logan is like the important one, you know. It's her main meal. I feel like this scene was really iconic. How he starts lifting all the cars and disarming mm. all the guys and points the gun at them. That feel like that's like a takeaway from this movie. Oh yeah. Side note: I was watching Reba one time at the uh, at that time. Okay. And that was like a exclusive scene that was just for the people who were watching Reba at nine o'clock on a random day. Oh, they did like a preview when the show's when the movie's about to come out. Exactly. Oh wow, that's wild that you remember that. Mm -hmm. I don't, and it just came to me. I'm a survivor. Mystique lands the chopper and the flyaway with Rogue. So the senator shows up to the door looking for Gene. So Charles reads his mind. And figures out that the machine gives Normie's powers, but the senator is actually rejecting it. So Magneto wants Rogue to power up the machine by giving him her powers. And then he don't care what happened to Rogue. She can die for all he cares. Well, did the machine have something special or was it just metal and magnetism that made everybody mutant? Because that is never said. True. They just say Magneto has a machine that can turn people into mutants. But they need Magneto's powers for it to work. But uh, how? I think that is the, the, the biggest plot hole in this movie. How the hell did that? Because they never said, oh, we need uh, some potion or whatever. No, it's just like, just you just need Magneto's powers. Sure. So the senator can't handle it and he turns into water. Charles uses Cerebro to find where Rogue is, but the poison messes him up. The same poison Mystique put in there. Jean finds the serum and she uses Cerebro, which Cerebro is Cerebro in Spanish, meaning brain. Didn't need no facts for that one. I knew that one. But she gets to enough info to figure out where the hell Rogue is to hurt all the world leaders. That is Magneto's plan. Logan suits up and Scott gives him a yellow spandex line. What would you prefer? Yellow spandex? How do you feel about the new suits? Never liked them. Yeah, a lot of people like complain about how non-flashy they are. And mm -hmm. even the actors were having like, extremely trouble moving because it's leather. Leather does not give. They spent a few hours one day because they couldn't get over like a little a wall or a bank because they just mm -hmm. couldn't move. It feels like that was the best way to translate it. it. Yeah, to translate it to live action. No, I'm not, not a fan of that. I really did not like those leather suits. So they make their way up to the Statue of Liberty. Logan sets off the alarm. He destroys it and flips up Scott. Logan can smell Miha, Rebecca Romaine. <laughs> he knows she's in the air. And she pops up and a Wolverine versus Wolverine fight starts. He would stab uh, Mystique's body do stunt double in the hand, through the hand with the claws. And when he was going to apologize, he was like, she was like, are you kidding? Wolverine stabbed me through my hand. Of course, they, they, I mean, they did develop three different kinds of claws. They had the steel ones, they had the plastic ones, and they had some rubber ones. Toad shows up and locks Scott away, throws Storm, and does a weird dance for Jean. He spits in her face, and then he starts kicking their ass too easily. I didn't like that. Mm -mm, me neither. It doesn't make sense for the character. It's Toad, man. You're going to. It's like, it's the re reversible we experience today where they make like the lady stronger. You're like, huh? Mm -hmm. But in this case, as a dude, and he's literally fighting off the two most powerful mutants in the game. Like, what are we doing? Exactly. Doesn't make no sense. Logan fighting uh, Mystique is another iconic scene. I feel like when she's transforming in midair. It is. And then the kick after, Simone. Yeah. And then she's on the floor and you're like, God damn, Rebecca Romaine. Oh, yeah. <sighs> yeah. And that's a pretty fair fight and it makes sense. Yeah. She crawls up and goes away. That was the weirdest scene I've seen in this movie. She crawled that crawl up the wall. But it fits with with, with, with her somehow, yeah. So to celebrate her last day on set, Rebecca Romaine brought a bottle of tequila and she was like sharing it between takes when mm -hmm. they were, had breaks. Unfortunately, she got a little bit too tipsy leading up to the final fight between her and Wolverine. Mm -hmm. She ended up throwing up blue colored vomit all over Hugh Jackman. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, the blue chemicals from her makeup, so that's foul. Wasn't she in the in the bed, like, completely naked for, like, three hours, four hours for, for the makeup? or More even like more? ten. 
Jesus! Yeah, for the first movie. They did get better as the movies went along, but it was a hassle. Yeah. Mm. I think she had over, I forget the number, uh, maybe over a hundred, over like 90 individual self adhesive stickers that she had to put on her too. Yeah. I would want that job. She couldn't get on a plane. She, there's a lot of stuff she couldn't do because it will alter her chemical balance in her body and the stuff wouldn't stick to her. Oh my God. So it was like a real pain in the ass. So in the movie, Storm is now pissed and she blows Toad away. Toad holds on to the rail and Storm gives probably the worst line in the whole trilogy. <laughs> yep. Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? The same thing that happens to everything else. That's bad. Bravo for the person that wrote that line. Hope you have diarrhea. It, the thing is, it was supposed to be delivered like a joke, you know, and with a different tone. Like she's shrugging it off like, hey, same as everything else, that kind of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. But Halle Berry insisted on saying it, it with a serious tone. So Halle's the one that kind of messed that one up. Pendeja. Logan stabs Storm because that line was so bad. But it wasn't Storm. It was actually Mystique. Then he meets up with Scott and Scott's like, hey, is that you? Prove it. You're a dick. Okay. <laughs> okay. <He's> like, okay. Okay. <laughs> I loved it. So Magneto <laughs> straps them all pretty easily and like puts them in an awkward situation. Logan stabs himself free, then stabs Sabretooth and gets chucked outside. They're out there fighting. Wolverine's that loop de loop he did through the spike. It doesn't make sense. That CGI did not hold up. It looks like caca. Mm -hmm. And then Logan finds Cyclops' visor, who Magneto took off as he was staring at my wife. And then they use it to yeet Sabretooth away. Storm and Jean yeet logan up there to face magneto he's gonna stab him but eric has enough juice to stop him ro gets her streak in her hair and then scott shoots magneto logan destroys the machine <laughs> this is kind of messed up so after he got vomited on by Rebe rebecca romaine which i feel like a lot of guys would volunteer for that mm -hmm. hugh jackman got his testicles caught in his harness after a six foot jump off oh, the statue of liberty jesus christ me wells I mean, at least Wolverine can heal. So Rogue is all messed up and he heals Rogue. They leave Eric at the Statue of Liberty to get captured and they head home where Child has woken up and Logan is recovering next to him because Rogue messed him up pretty good. He wakes up and tells Jean that he loved her and Charles tells Logan about the abandoned facility. Mystique pretends to be the Senator Kelly on TV and starts to saying that she, he made a mistake about the mutants and they're all coup. Eric warns Charles that the war is still coming and Charles says we will always be there. Which leads us to the second movie, X-Men Dose. Is it X-Men Dose or is just X2, huh? X2 no I don't know if I like that. Do you like I that? hated it. I hate it. I thought it was X-Men 2. I, I always call it X-Men 2. X2 it doesn't... It feels like such an early 2000s trying to be cool thing. So X2 starts with another Charles speech, which I love. Mutants. Since the discovery of their existence, they have been regarded with fear, suspicion, often hatred. So we start with Nightcrawler whooping ass at the White House. Mm, ooh, best scene. Yeah, I love how he looks. Like the CGI of him teleporting. Mm -hmm. So Neil Patrick Harris auditioned for Nightcrawler. Oh my God. But lost out to Alan Cumming because he spoke fluent German. First of all, I did not know Nightcrawler was German. Yeah. I mean, in the series, he's like in Germany and they're messing around. I always confuse Alex Cumming with Pee Wee growing up. Oh, sí, cierto. Y nada que ver. So Nightcrawler gets shot and teleports away. Logan is at the location that Charles told him from the last movie while the X-Men are at a field trip. Pyro sets a dude on fire and Bobby puts him out. Then Charles rolls in and is like, we don't do that neighbor. And freezes everybody. <laughs> How did it freeze everybody? I don't know. I don't know, but he keeps doing it throughout the whole movie. <laughs> to you, Greg. They go back to discuss the White House attack and Stryker's at the White House investigating the attack with Lady Deathstrike. Senator from the first movie shows up, which we already know is Mystique, and Stryker spilling the tea on the school, which was supposed to be a secret. What are we doing? The president authorized Stryker to interrogate. Storm looking great coming down the stairs. So then I was like, God damn, she looked good in that one. Doc. The movies progress. Storm's hair get, gets getting shorter, and I love it even more. So Storm and Jean are sent out to go find Nightcrawler. Stryker visits Eric in his plastic playpen. They drop some shit on his neck to make him chill the fuck out so he can have a conversation with him and starts asking him questions about Cerebro. Logan and Charles are in Cerebro, showing us how many mutants and how many humans there are, and they find Nightcrawler. They do mention the Trask build uh, Magneto's uh, plastic prison, and he's the same guy that made the Sentinels. Logan wants to know more about his past because it was promised to him, but he's left to babysit instead. 
Mystique out here mystiquing, and she finds Cerebro 2 files on a pewter. Lady Deathstrike walks in, and she turns into a Mexican because we have clearance to everything. <laughs> we get everywhere, every time. And no, no questions asked. Basura. Estoy tirando la basura. In Boston, Jean and Storm track down Nightcrawler. Logan has a nightmare, and he goes to the kitchen to get a snack. Again, this is where we see Jackson's body, which is way different from the first movie. He gained 20 pounds of muscle from the first movie to the second. Damn. Charles heads over to go see Eric, and Charles noticed that he's being different, and he blames Stryker, who is the father of a, a kid that Charles wasn't able to help. He reveals that he told Stryker everything about Cerebro and everything, so Scott and Charles get KO'd, and they swat the skew. <laughs> KO'd. They start by shooting a kid in the throat, which is pretty <laughs> random. <pretty Aww>. stuff. <laughs> All Hi. <laughs> they start knocking kids out and we see Kitty Pride again running through the walls. So they wake up this annoying bitch and she starts screaming and wakes everybody else. La Banshee standing? Yeah. <laughs> Shoot her! <laughs> Clocked her once. <laughs> then Logan does a death scream of himself. He's way more vicious in the second movie. He don't actually don't kill anybody in the first. No, but I love it. it, it as, as the movies progress, he get, keeps getting a little bit more savage. And they do refer to him as an animal. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, and they show it, though. They don't just say it. We also see Colossus. Colossus ain't Russian, though, on the one. No. He's Peter, not Peter. Pyro, Rogue, and Bobby stay behind. Logan f dudes up. Angel and Beast were actually supposed to be part of the original script, but were dropped out because they felt like there was too many characters and they saved them for the third movie. And they did juggle all these bunch of characters pretty well. But also Gambit was also considered as a new character. Oh my God. But they ultimately went with Nightcrawler because he was more of an outsider looking guy. Poor Gambit. He always getting shafted every time. That's my favorite guy, man. It sucks. Also, Sabretooth and Toad were set to return until it was felt like too many mutants in the script, so they were taken out. And Toad was even supposed to have a one-on-one -on -one fight with Nightcrawler, which would have been cool. Oh, yeah, would be dope. Shaquille O'Neal wanted to be in this movie and campaigned really hard to be in it, but I don't know for what. And finally, Nick Fury was intended to be in this film, but was scrapped due to licensing rights with Marvel. Thank God. I wonder if he would have been a white guy or a black guy. It would have been white. Stryker comes out and starts talking to Logan as they were lost homies, but Logan don't know who he is. And an ice block between them blocks him. That was real ice, bro. Look, it looked too real. And he's touching it and it looks like, whoa. But yeah. And when, when he takes the glove off, it's all wet. I'm like, yeah. Is that ice? It's real ice. It was 3,200 pounds of ice. Oh my Lord. So they escape in Scott's Mazda. And Scott is apparently an NSYNC fan, which shout out. <laughs> that, that was hilarious. I don't like uncomfortable silences. What are you doing? But can we talk about the insanely cool phone Scott has in his in the stereo? I've always thought that was the best shit ever from this movie. The little phone that don't work for some reason <laughs> for a mm -hmm. long time until they need Why not? to. Exactly. Because they head over to Bobby's house in Boston. Stryker breaks into Cerebro and starts stripping it. We cut to a bar and in the TV it says that there's an interview with Hank McCoy. He's humanized. Rebecca Romaine drugs a fatty guard who's in charge of Magneto and injects his ass with iron. Charles is captured by Stryker and starts to go on about his son. And shows how he's actually controlling his mutants. It's revealed that he's the one that arranged the attack on the Prez. He's using his son's brain liquid that controls minds as a serum. So we're at Bobby's house. And Logan trying to use the X-Men phone that's not working. Rogue and Iceman make out a little bit. But they go too far and he almost dies. Logan almost kills the cat and the family shows up. We're back with the fatty who goes to give Eric food. And he uses the iron in his blood to break out. But what I love is Magneto's roasting the fatty even after he killed him. <laughs> I'll see. <laughs> Mario never trust a beautiful woman, especially one who's interested in you. You really had to like roast him after you extracted iron out of his. Come on, man. Again, his bitchiness. Man. Hell yeah! It gets worse and worse as the movie goes on. I love it. So he breaks out. We go back to Bobby, who's coming out of his parents as a mutant. His brother is a bigot who calls a popo. Storm and Nightcrawler chatting about faith. And Gene picks up the comm device and starts to talk to Logan. Logan's like, get your ass over here. We're having problems. <laughs> Bobby's mom is like, have you tried not being a mutant? It's like the same 
conversation a member of the LGBT community would have. That's yep. why like they related with it so much. They even reintroduced Iceman in the comics in 2015 as gay. So 5-0 gets to the house. They shoot Logan in the head. <laughs> that That's up. hilarious. And Pyro starts blasting, raising his wanted level up to three stars. And then Rogan chills his ass out. Logan recovers in the jet lands. Bobby's like, pues, you guys, I'm leaving. <laughs> Chinguen a su madre ustedes. Sí, wey, I don't need you. Then we get to see how powerful Jason is. He's messing with Charles, making him see shit. Stronger than Charles. That's a high bar. So two aircrafts are following them and they fire at the jet. Storm dodges one and starts messing with the weather. Gene moves one out of the way, but can't. So they get hit. Rogue flies out because she's not wearing her seatbelt, which is weird because she told Logan to put the seatbelt on the first movie and she wasn't able to do it in here. Mm -hmm. But Nightcrawler teleports and go gets her. And then they're eventually caught by Magneto. And he, with his sassy ass once again, <laughs> is like, When will these people learn how to fly? <laughs> Hijo de puta, güey. Eric starts spilling the beans about Stryker wanting to build another Cerebro. And that's why he got Charles, so they can use Cerebro to kill all the mutants. And he believes that Crawler knows where the hell the base is, so Gene takes a gander in his mind. The base is actually underground, Alkali Lake. Logan starts rizzing up Gene, he steals a kiss. Kind of sucks for Scott, he's getting cucked. Yeah, that's true. I feel like other than like looks throughout the series, I, I was trying to figure out why does Logan love her just because she's falling? It's superficial. Gene comes into Logan's tent for more they start getting hot and heavy but it's actually mystique for that old man dick mystique would be probably like the best girlfriend though because she she can turn into whatever you want yep she can even turn into old white guy which is what she actually does and kills the boner that would be the worst practical joke in the middle of it you're about to bust and she turns into something you're like hey no <laughs> <laughs> i want that eric and mystique start high school bullying rogue about her hair <laughs> hilarious <laughs> but cerebro 2 is now complete and striker has Kids that he stole from the mansion to test him out. Mystique goes down the spillway as Logan and Stryker knows immediately that that's not Logan. And Mystique starts to kick some ass and slides backwards, flipping them off. That was awesome, too. Yeah, that made the movie for me <laughs> when I was a kid. They reach the control room. Logan is like, the plan, I'm going to go after Stryker. What's the hold that Stryker's got on Jason? It's just because he's his dad? I would imagine it's because he's it's his dad and... He invested a bunch of money to run experiments on his son. So the son is traumatized? Like, why is Jason doing it? That Stockholm Central son. So Charles, with cerebral dose, starts looking for the mutants. Scott shoots Eric and Mystique because he's now mind controlled. And Kurt goes to Storm to help the kids where Jubilee is. We see her for the second time. Then we get Scott versus Gene. They fight and they crack the dam. And Scott snaps out of it, but also snapped Gene's leg a little. Oh, and then this movie, we see the phoenix popping his, his ugly face. But then Logan finds where he was getting experimented on and starts to remember all the nakedness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do we see dick? Probably. Turns out that it was supposed to be a close set because he was butt ass naked. And when he runs out the door, he opens the door. And it's Gene. It's all the the women also oh, with money. And I think it was it was Holly Berry's mom or one of the girls' moms was also hurling money and Hugh Jackman. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, damn! But imagine, and I was like, oh, imagine if that was a naked lady running and all the guys with money. That'd be messed up. But como es bato, it's all cool. So Striker pops up and starts talking about adamantium and sets up Logan versus Lady Deathstrike, and she starts kicking his ass. Machine until he injects her with so much adamantium it comes out of her eyes. That was foul. Oh, uh, that that was a bad way to die. Then Magneto pulls off all the grenade pins on the guards that are guarding Cerebro out there and blows their <laughs> ass up. But Charles starts to kill the mutants, so everybody starts to feel the effects except Eric because he's got his handy dandy helmet. Magneto flips the machine to start to find and kill humans instead. And Logan is offered his pass to leave with Striker, but he gets tied up and heads back to save the Edsmen. They teleport into Cerebro, but they immediately go into the vision right after they pop inside boom they're ensnared so magneto hurts striker and dips with pyro storm conjures up the blizzard and starts to get jason be all cold and charles snaps out of it everything starts falling apart and kurt just straight up leaves jason there to die but kind of harsh no i mean well, well he wasn't a person anymore i mean he still like had feelings i don't think so well he was he felt fear so logan catches up but the helo is gone because magneto took it 
Rogue comes in all janky with the jet. <laughs> She's all traumatized. Logan is carrying a kid mine, and finds Stryker chained up, and he says that he'll take his chances with the mutants. The jet is not working, and the dam is f- So Jean wobbles her fine ass outside, and then she easily turns everything on before like why didn't she do that before because she she's feeling the phoenix force i would imagine you could have done all that from the jet yes and what the is old dusty ass charles doing he's just sitting there aren't you two like the top 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 tamales of the whole thing allegedly turns out no turns out uh, jason's mind just let him left them all vegetative so she's holding off the water while controlling the jet and then she uses charles to say goodbye i really wanted marsden to make out with patrick stewart that would have been cool (laughs) i love you (laughs) (laughs) so my girl sacrifices herself and we all crying chingado gene cut to the president giving a statement regarding what happened charles freezes everyone once again storm does some scary shit with the lightning the x-men appear and show that striker had plans and warns him about a war that's coming to watch your mouth (laughs) basically (laughs) they try to justify like her choices too here why did you leave the plane because she made a choice poorly but yeah yeah they didn't do a good job because i was still like no that's stupid i don't agree with what you're saying right there did you feel like logan's hair was kind of weird no well he was filming van helsing with his long ass hair they had to call him for a reshoot so they put that horrific wig oh no over the long ass hair so that was that's why his head kind of looks longer so we do end in a gene monologue and originally gene gray was supposed to fully transform into dark phoenix in this movie but instead we get what looks like to be like the phoenix logo under the water so gene die which leads us to the final movie of the trilogy so before we get into the very last movie of the trilogy if you're still hanging out with us right now thank you very much appreciate it this is going to be the longest video we've ever done so if you're still here that means you like us so make sure you like the video comment down below and subscribe to the channel let's get into x-men the last stand there's no charles monologue this time nope we get a flashback of charles and Eric recruiting young Jean Grey with a de-aging CGI, which I would say looks okay by today's standards. It looks, yeah, it looks fine, but you see it even in the lips. With As the movies were going along, they were getting more budget. So this movie had a $210 million budget. And Damn. at the time, this was the most expensive movie ever made. Oh, verga. This is where we see the Stan Lee vi- cameo as Jean's neighbor with the, with the Madeira. Oh. Simon. Then we cut to a kid who's cutting his wings off, and we go into the cut for the 2000s intro. We are training our young X-Men. We see the actor formerly known as Ellen Page playing Kitty Pride. Ah, that dead bitch got my heart way. <laughs> May she rest in peace, I guess. For Kitty Pride, Eliza Dushku was considered, as well as Summer Glau. Mm. I can see Summer Glau. Yeah. And once again, my boy Gambit was going to appear in this movie. Damn it. He would have had a love interest with Rogue. However, 20th Century Fox was developing X-Men Origins Wolverine at the time. Oof. And they didn't want to repeat mutants. So he, Gambit was removed from the script. They should have put him in this movie instead of that piece of shit movie. So in one of the 27 versions of the script, they had Josh Holloway, who was also offered to play Gambit. Also in one of the scripts, Emma Frost was wow. supposed to appear and singer wanted sigourney weaver to play frost i don't know mm. if that makes sense and also once again keanu reeves to play gambit <laughs> they no. just couldn't get my boy in these <laughs> movies man chinga madre they even shafted it with tatum also dazzler was supposed to be featured in the movie as well oh that's interesting especially since alan cummings who played nightcrawler in the second one left the franchise after the only after the one movie because the crew believed it was not worth going through the long preparation he was going to have a short little cameo but they felt like it wasn't worth to put all that prosthetics on him so it was actually written in the video game series that nightcrawler decided to leave because he no longer wanted to live the violent lifestyle of the x-men oh damn okay makes sense so you have to play the video game to figure out what the hell's going on (laughs) So we're back at the danger room where Colossus throws Logan and cuts the Sentinel heads off. And Scott over here dealing over Gene. I feel you, man. That's wifey right there. Again, but why is Scott such a wimp? What do you mean? His Miha die. But he's the leader of the X-Men. But him Miha die. His Miha died in the comics. He made a school and named it after her. También el pinche Logan. But it just happened, fool. He's a bitch in the movies. <laughs> okay. Well, what really actually happened is that Marsden had a role for another movie, so they had to cut his part in the movie 
uh, dramatically. That sucks. I also had a little Mandela effect way. Like, before watching these movies again, if you were to ask me if Beast is in all three of the movies, I would have said yes. Not that? Yeah, I forgot oh. he's only in this one. Hey, with a legendary Kelsey Grammer. Grammer's voice is perfect, man. That's yep. very good casting. The makeup is fantastic as well. He's been my favorite Beast, even since the, the, the series... Or the series that came out after. Uh, it's a little late now. But in the first movie, remember the truck driver that's hitchhiking Rogue? Oh, Simon. That's the voice actor for Beast. Oh, no mames. Sam Neill was close to become Beast, but no, because of why? Scheduling. See way. <laughs> so government tracking Magneto, but they actually captured Mystique. They're interrogating her for Magneto's whereabouts, but she proves to be a little difficult. I like how she hops on top of the table and goes through the cuffs. That's iconic, I feel like. Oh, see. It's like a lot of mystique moves are memorable. Mid-air transformation in the first one. In the second one, the flipping off. And in this one, the the, the cuffs thing. The cuffs was, thing. Yeah. Shout outs to mystique. Charles giving an ethics class back at the mansion using Morat McTaggart with her patient as an example who has no consciousness, but his body works. So is it okay as a psychic to take over this man's body and seems like a little thing at the time, but comes into play later. Mm -hmm. Lecture is cut short because it starts to get cold outside and he figures out that Storm is sad. So Halle Berry had initially decided not to reprise her role as Storm for this movie. Mm -hmm. because she felt like there was a lack of development development in the last two movies, which I would agree. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Plus, she had a very tense relationship with director of those two movies, Brian Singer. Oh. However, Fox and Singer couldn't reach a deal for the third movie, and he went on to go do Superman Returns. Aye. Yeah, which he feels like it's a was, a was a regret. So Singer leaving... Plus, Halle Berry was fresh off the dumpster that was Catwoman. Jesus Christ. So she agreed to return on the condition that her role is expanded. After Singer left, they brought in Matthew Vaughn to direct a second, the third movie. Okay. Who eventually was, would go on to do X-Men First Class. Thing is, there was a fake scheme to trick Halle Berry into coming back where they wrote in the script of the opening where she's saving kids from Africa. Mm -hmm. That wasn't going to be in the movie. That was just to trick Halle Berry to do the movie, and then they were going to cut that out. Vaughn was like, yeah, you motherfuckers, that's not cool. I quit. Oh, damn, okay. So he dipped. Cool on your morals, Vaughn. Then Brett Ratner was the one that took on the role of director. Barry agreed to do the movies, and consequently, in this movie, Storm kind of replaces Cyclops and Xavier as the team leader of the X-Men. Hank comes up to Charles, he's like, hey, what's good, homie, and starts to talk about a mutant antibody cure that has been developed. <gasps> then we see the dick hole with the sun in the beginning, who we now, who's never really called Angel, but his name is Angel. Mm -hmm. He's the one that developed it. Rogue is interested in the cure, because she's basically horny right that's her main reasoning <laughs> she want to get piped down way magneto shows up to a mutant meeting talking about they're going to force us with the cure on them and they start to recruit them to the brotherhood against the humans they just kind of gave me all flashbacks with the whole cure thing they're going to inject us with 5g <laughs> 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 they magnetize your arm he recruits a lady that can sense mutants so magneto wants her to find one for him legendary line magneto shall ever touch my skin <laughs> like a g-way so they move in mystique around and she messing around with the guard making him call little girls a bitch <laughs> keep it up i'll spray you in the face bitch <laughs> so hank goes to the lab where they're developing the cure where they use a little boy's power i guess is the opposite of jason a little for the cure and he gets deferrified for a second <laughs> scott goes to the lake and he can start to hear gene he shoots at it and as if he were a part of pokemon snap he triggers something and gene appears And he even asks her, how did that happen? She's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me, dude. Okay, seems good enough for me. Eugene's back. And then both of them look and turn to the camera. So she starts kissing Scott, but hurts him. And Charles starts to feel that and sends his X-Men to the lake. Logan finds Scott's glasses and Storm finds Jean alive. Charles goes on to say that he created barriers in Jean's mind to protect her from the side that can control her powers and the other dormant side, who's more powerful, that calls herself Phoenix. Dun, dun, dun. Logan don't give a shit because... He's all pissed. You shouldn't be able to control people. The old white dude is going to give this cure to his son with the wings, but he freaks out and busts out and then flies away. 
mamadísimo. Yeah, him, him jumping off the, the gurney thing and the wings pop out. That feels like such a trailer moment, too. That sticks out in my brain a lot. Yep. The, and him jumping out the, the window. The building seaway. Hell yeah, it looks cool. Then Magneto stops a convoy with Mystiques in it and she kills the guy she said she was going to kill. And she starts telling him about the cure kid. So now, now Magneto, his ears perked up. And they start to free mutants. They free a multiplier guy. And they free Juggernaut who has to piss. You can let me out of here. I need a pee. I know you love Juggernaut. He's probably your favorite. Huh? <laughs> See, wait, I love him. I love him. So guards shoot a dagger with the cure at Eric. But Mystique jumps in front of him to save Eric. And just like that, he drops her naked, beautiful body from the team. Yeah. And even he's a... It's a shame. She was so beautiful. What do you mean, dog? She still is. Come on. Get on, man. Get on. Logan is looking over Jean, and she wakes up, and she grabs him, which is a callback to the first time they met in the first movie. Scott is such a bitch, everybody forgot about him. I don't know, but then Jean wakes up and starts acting all sexy with Logan. I was like, I way. What the hell <laughs> is going on there? They start going at it. It's going no mama is the, the metal plank is getting all horny. Think with his pants, dog. <laughs> then he sees that she's actually not the same, and he finally asks, where the hell is Scott? It's like she's going in between Jean and Phoenix, and she begs Logan to kill her. Cut, Scott dead. Ah, but pinche Professor X anda con sus mamadas, controlling people. Yeah, he was trying to prevent it, so she breaks shit and runs away. Xavier tracks her down as well to her old house, where she's just sitting there chilling, but Eric is there too, so they both go in to recruit Jane to their respective sides. But she's sitting there getting pissed, and Charles is trying to help her and trying to get in her brain, and then shit starts moving, so the X-Men from outside start fighting. Meanwhile, Charles and Jean are having a staring contest inside the house. Logan opens the door and takes a peek at the staring contest, and Magneto goes, Bloody, you fools. I know, my bad, wrong movie, dog. That, uh, that don't happen to anyone. That's a different movie. <laughs> my bad. That would be tight, though. Yeah. I mean, very similar parallels, I gotta say. No, instead, Charles is made into mush, and Eric is like, damn. You killed my homies. <laughs> yeah. So we're back at the school that they're mourning Charles. Bob is actually consoling Kitty a little bit and he freezes some water so she can go skate around and Rogue up in the window starts spying and starts to get jelly. Rogue is all butthurt so she decides to leave once again and is tired of her powers so she wants to get some of that cure. Her shit's throbbing. <laughs> Magneto at the camp talking to Phoenix and she starts f***ing <laughs> with, with the cure. Like, <laughs> I'll bitch you. And again, I just love the friendship that we mentioned before between Charles and Eric. Like, mm -hmm. they're like the best friends, but even though they were best friends, they had opposing views and they had opposing goals, but they never really lost the respect for each other. Exactly. I love that. Even when Charles died, like, Eric gets pissy when Pyro makes a comment. He's like, Charles and Xavier did more for mutants than you'll ever know. My single greatest regret is that he had to die for our dream to live. Bobby finds out Rogue Dip and Logan starts hearing gene in his head and he sets out to look for her bobby meets pyro at the clinic and pyro blows that shit up then magneto sends out a warning message and to my fellow mutants i make you this offer join us or stay out of our way the president's like bet bitch you want a war let's go <laughs> and they start gearing up with metalless weapons logan starts sniffing for gene then all of a sudden gets attacked and for the first time in the movie we see him as a tank and i don't mean we see his tank top i mean we see his body. He's a big old tank, Doc. And he's tanking a lot of hits, but God damn. Oh, es que no mames, he must have put on another 20 pounds of muscle for this one. Beefy. So he kills everybody and infiltrates the Brotherhood camp as Eric is giving a speech. And he's saying that he will strike. And if any mutant stands in their way, they will use the cure against him. Logan finds Gene, but Magneto grabs him once again and yeets his ass through the woods. <laughs> that was funny. Mystique betrays Magneto. And the army starts to track him down with the radar and sees a bunch of dots on there. But it was just a multiplier goober who's played by Grey's Anatomy McSteamy, a.k.a. Eric Dane. I didn't like the dude. Yeah. I mean, he says like the same thing twice. Like, eh, like he's kind of a dick. Mm -hmm. Logan recruits the X-Men to fight Eric's army. It's a good old fashioned six V the army. <laughs> That's my one. Eric uses the Golden Gate Bridge to get to the lab. It's like, dude, just steal a damn fairy or something. <laughs> I know if there's easier way. I mean, he was trying to make a point, but there was easier ways, I easier know. and faster ways to do this. He's like, nah, I'm just going to take the whole ass bridge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Wait. So according to visual effects supervisor, John Bruno, about $35 million was spent on the Golden Gate Bridge sequence Bear alone. God, wait. 
So by the time they all walk across the bridge, it's nighttime. <laughs> you notice that? It was like nighttime. Yeah. He, these up. <laughs> he moved it during the day. Boom. Night. Yeah. And then he's like. That's why the poems go first. Oh, that was so harsh, bro. I think that's what where it cements that he's a bad guy. Yeah. And he lets them get lit up by the cure. Then the lady claps the weapons away. Then the X-Men show up and start kicking ass. Juggernaut runs off to try to kill the boy, and Kitty mm. goes after him. Logan kicks a guy in the balls. Grow those back. Kitty pulls Juggernaut down the ground, and he gives the best line of the trilogy. I'm the Juggernaut, bitch! Oh, with that accent. Oh, I lost it. All that way. All his, uh, the best thing ever. Yeah, the, hint, the whole five seconds. Because him popping out of the ground is tight. The whole thing. <laughs> Kitty gets to the kid. Juggy catches up and she calls him a dick. <laughs> and he KOs himself because the kid's got the power. So he don't have the powers anymore to go to the walls. And he's not even a mutant. No, he's not a mutant. That's correct. He's like a, also an experiment guy. Yeah. He, his powers come from a gem. Yeah. They toss the old white guy off the roof and his son saves his ass. Then Magneto's like <laughs> this and starts chucking cars at them. <laughs> The X-Men find some cure ammo right there. And then we get Bobby versus Pyro. Mm -hmm. That was an okay fight. A storm sets a fog over. Colossus throws Logan at Magneto, replicating the training. He even delivers that at his full zesty potential. You never learn, do you? <laughs> yeah. It's like, I do. And Hanks pops out and stabs him with the cure. I loved the looks that they were giving each other when they found the cure. Mm -hmm. Storm, Hank, and Logan were like, oh, damn, do we dare to do this to Magneto? You know? And they're like, I guess, like, there was a whole conversation with their eyes. Yeah, I love that. I think that was my favorite scene of this movie. Yeah. Like, for real, because they said a lot of stuff with that, in those seconds. He's not giving us a choice, man. He hates humans. We're going to turn him into what he hates the most. Mm -hmm. And it's like, are we really going to do that right now? He's like, I guess. But no one says anything. It's all done by looks. That was probably, yeah, I agree, my best favorite part. They all start talking to Gene like, it's all good, girl. It's over. Come on, let's do it. But then, like always, the army shows up. They shoot at Gene and piss her off. Kitty comes out with the kid. And Eric regrets unleashing the phoenix himself. What have I done? She starts to attack Logan as he's trying to get close to her while he's healing, allowing him to get close to her. That looked cool. Yeah, that seems pretty dope. He like, I love you, and stabs her. She smiles and dies. Way to show your love. Put me out of my misery. But my problem is not even that. It's like, they spent the whole movie saying how she's level five and the most powerful shit ever. And you said, well, you're going to At least cut her head off, Lee. Yeah, something like a little bit more savage. Yeah, because it's just like, it was fast, too. It was like, fish. Uh, 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 I die. It's like, uh, that don't that don't feel right. When somebody gets stabbed and then falls, I, I've never thought that was real. In my head, they're yelling, they're screaming, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, they always take the blade in so chill. Like, uh, yeah. So we get Gene and Scott are laid to rest next to Charles. Rogue is back, but she got the cure because she wants to bang Bobby. But Bobby don't, now don't want to bang her. Well, because he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> and then they recruit the kid right who you can't really stand next to because he takes your powers away so how does that work because he wasn't doing it on purpose it was not on purpose but maybe they teach him how to control and in the meantime and... he's disarming the whole school <laughs> like, yeah basically <laughs> train i can't and marcus over here he's got his <laughs> powers man <laughs> yeah. i couldn't do my homework <laughs> professor storm why because i'm bunking with marquitos over here with <laughs> <laughs> Eric playing chess alone in the park and he tries to move a metal piece and it gives a little nudge in the end of the movie. How is he not in jail? Because he didn't get caught. That's why. It's still up in the air because he's like chilling right there playing chess. But then it's like he feels something in the air change. Like he can all of a sudden feel the metal and then he tries to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And he does it. He got the power. Yeah. I forgot about this post credit scene. I, th I don't think I saw it back in the day. So... There's a post credit scene where we see Maura McTaggart, the lady who Charles used in his lecture about transferring minds and, and all that shit. I told you it was going to come back. Oh, yeah. So Charles seemingly transferred his consciousness to her patient and is like, what's good, Moira? What's up, girl? Hello, Moira. Charles. In the DVD commentary, it explains that the brain dead man is actually P. Xavier, Charles Xavier's twin brother. <gasps> who was overpowered by Charles' psychic abilities while they were in their mother's womb. 
and rendered him brain dead, which to me felt too convenient. Damn. Okay. So I'm glad you don't really see that guy's face. Yes. This is like some telenovela shit. Your twin brother who looks just like you, but oh, like you can walk now. It's kind of like, come on. 20th Century Fox made several unsuccessful attempts at developing, of, at developing a fourth movie before completely deciding to reboot with X-Men First Class, which that whole movie uses time travel to eliminate inconvenient elements of the past continuity. I do feel like the movies were growing as they were going along, right? Yeah, they, you do feel, even picture-wise, they look very different. I do feel like they balance all the characters nicely. Mm-hmm. I feel like there was still enough spot for one more. You <laughs> but a, <window. laughs> a New Orleans-based one? And I also feel like they did a good job in translating the X-Men into live action, you know? Like, even with the wig that we mentioned, right, in one of the other <laughs> movies, it still doesn't look ridiculous. Oh, you no. Know? It looks easy to parody, which would happen throughout all the 2000s. They were making fun of, you know, his hair. Oh, yeah. But the live action-ness of it didn't look ridiculous. No, oh, you bought it. What's your favorite one out of the three? Second one. Hands down by far. And what sticks in my mind is the whole school raid. Mm -hmm. We saw Colossus. I love the Colossus. It, it was an impactful thing for me, watching Colossus be metal. I think because I saw it the most, I like the third one the most. Yeah, you you are more sighted to the third one since we were in middle school. Yeah, I always liked the third one the most because it's the one I just saw the most. And I think it's the one that's rated the lowest. So you're probably going to disagree on that one. But that's fine. I thought I always thought that the third one was a piece of shit, but no, it's nah. good. It's it's okay. I mean, out of the three, out of the three, it is the worst one. But that's not saying much because the, all three are good. Yeah, they're all they're all very good, and I still like the, I feel like they still hold up, barring a few CGI mm -hmm. decisions. If you made it this far in this long ass video, if you're not subscribed to the channel, then something is wrong with you. Because why would you make it all the way out here? I know. So if somehow you're not sick of X Men. I'll leave my review to the X-Men OG animated series right here for you. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Remember to always and forever. You do. Bye. I'm pissed that they never use that never, never.